The holidays are coming quickly and if you have family photos coming up or you just know you're going to be taking photos with your family, today's tutorial is showing you what makeup I would use when I know I'm taking family photos or just going to be either in front of the camera or taking photos of myself <laughs> because that's a part of my job. So I'm walking through the steps I go through and then just sharing tips along the way for you to kind of look your best, most natural self with the help of a little bit of makeup. So I have yet to find a primer that I am totally sold out for. So I'm giving the Primetime Original Foundation Primer by Bare Minerals a test today. With primer, um, you don't need to go overboard. Just a little bit will do. Think pea size amount. And I will just rub this into my skin. Mainly the areas that makeup can kind of cake or settle on me because of dryness is around my nose and around my eyebrows and up on my forehead. So that is where I wanna focus the primer. I gotta say, this feels like silk. It feels really great. So after my skin is primed, I always like to start with my eyes first. Part of this is just habit. I think I taught myself how to do makeup that way. Um, and I like that I can clean up any fallout underneath my eyes before applying foundation. So I always start with an eyelid primer and I love Max Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. So I'll apply that over my lids with my finger. Also with this, a little bit goes a long way and you can use this as just all that you're gonna do on your eyes or you can use it as a primer like I'm using here. So let's move on to eyeshadow. I've been loving this Glow Skin Beauty palette. It has just such beautiful shades in it. So, so I use a combination of these two all over my lid, a little bit more of this at the inner corner, this on my crease, and then I can use a bit of that as eyeliner. So I'll show you how to do that. I just use a flat eyeshadow brush and press it into these two shades here and apply it all over my lid. Make sure you go up near your eyebrow so the crease shade, if you have eyelids like me, which do not have a pronounced crease, the crease shade has somewhere to go and will apply evenly. If you only put eyeshadow here and then you apply the crease on top of it, you'll be applying the crease shade on top of eyeshadow and then on top of just your skin and it may not blend easily. So you're better off going a little bit higher than you want with the shade that's all over your lid putting the crease on it and then kind of blending away any of that eyeshadow color that might be too high. So now I'm picking up kind of a darker brown crease shade and pressing that into my makeshift crease area because it's not very pronounced and blending it away. Then with a clean brush, pick up a lighter shade and you can kind of blend away any of the crease that went a little bit too high. Not only does this part soften the eye makeup, but it kind of creates, gives you an opportunity to create a uniform shape on each eye. The lighter eyeshadow looks good on your brow bone and it cleans up that, that darker crease color. Then pick a sort of shimmery shade if you have it. I'm gonna do just this one and press that just into the inner corners. This helps brighten up your eye area. For eyeliner, especially on days that I know I'm having my picture taken, I like to choose browns instead of blacks. I find that that just looks a little bit better with my lighter skin tone. If you have a darker skin tone than me or darker hair, you could certainly do black. You can also do black if you have lighter skin or hair than me, um, but I just prefer brown because it ends up a little bit softer. So this is Stila's Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner in shade Damsel. I'll apply this on my upper lash line and then use a smudge brush to smudge it, soften the line, and then pull it out into a tiny little cat eye.
Next up is mascara, and I have been loving Benefit's Roller Lash Mascara, so I'll apply a coat of that. And then, because my lashes are pretty thin on their own, I like to apply a little bit of lash fibers. Mine are from Cherry Bloom, and I'll put those on right on top of the wet mascara. This part, of course, is optional if you don't have sad lashes like I do. You can just use regular mascara. So there's a coat of roller lash, and then I'll just pick up my lash fibers. Similar to mascara, it's just dry fibers, and run that over the mascara. And then I'll let that dry and do another coat of roller lash. So now moving on to foundation, I've been loving a beauty blender, so I moistened this under my faucet and then squeezed it out as best I could. And then I love the Arbonne Perfecting Liquid Foundation. My shade here is Buff. Anytime I'm gonna be on camera or having my picture taken, Arbonne is what I use. If I couldn't get Arbonne, my second runner-up foundation would be, oh, let me think about this for a minute. I think my second runner-up foundation would have to be the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation. But Arbonne just agrees with my skin really well, looks natural, but provides full coverage. So I'm just dotting the Beauty Blender into the foundation and spreading it all over my skin. My fear initially with the Beauty Blender is that it would kind of soak up the makeup or kind of wipe it away, but I found that isn't the case at all. You can still get very, very full coverage with it. And you don't have any brush strokes that you may run into if you use a brush. If you prefer to use a brush instead of a beauty blender, a stippling brush will give you the fullest coverage with your foundation. You just dot that brush all over your skin, just like I'm doing with the beauty blender. Blending it down my neck a little bit I'm recovering from a cold sore on my chin, so I'll have to do some concealing there. But foundation is just about finished. So for concealer, I love the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. This is shade one, and I'll just put a little bit of it on the back of my hand, just like I did my foundation. With the tip of the Beauty Blender, pick up a bit of that concealer, press it into my eye area. Also on blemishes that need a little covering. And then I'll just go back and forth, dotting it as well, just blending it in. To set the concealer, I pick a fluffy brush. This is a very, very old one from Real Techniques, but it's nice and fluffy at the tip. And I've been loving the Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder by It Cosmetics. This is a translucent setting powder, as you can see. So I'll just brush a little bit of the product right under my eyes to set in place. And then I'll use a bigger brush to set the rest of my makeup. Setting your concealer under your eye will keep it from creasing. But don't use a powder that has any tone to it. You want to go for something that's translucent. You can also use a loose powder if you prefer that. So now I'm grabbing a very, also very old Sonia Kashuk powder brush and just picking up some of that translucent setting powder and dusting it very lightly all over my skin. I did the best I could covering my blemish on my chin. If any of you suffer from cold sores, you know they're a beast to cover. So that's as good as I can get today. Okay, so foundation is set, now we'll move on to eyebrows. I've been loving the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil in shade one. It has a spoolie on one end and then an angled tip on the other. This is very similar to Hourglass Arch Brow Pencil, which oh, was my favorite for years and I still really love it. But for me right now, this shade in Benefit is lighter than the Platinum Blonde, the lightest, shade that Hourglass offered, and I find that this suits me a little bit better right now. Come winter time, if my hair gets a bit darker, I may switch back to Hourglass, but I've been loving this one for, I'd say most of the summer I've been wearing it. I 
I don't really have a lot of eyebrows to start with, so every day it's kind of a, let's see what, what shape I get <laughs> with eyebrow pencil. Next I'm picking up these fibers, also by Benefit, called Gimme Brow. This adds a little bit of thickness, a little bit of darkness to my eyebrows, and I'll just kind of brush my eyebrow hairs that I do have sort of up and out. So that's all I do with eyebrows. I kind of keep it simple. Just two products, sort of fast. I don't spend a lot of time on them, but I do like to define them. So now we'll move on to defining my face with a contour shade and then a blush. Um, I also have been loving this Glow Skin Beauty palette. It's a contour palette. It has two dark shades and two light shades. I like to use a sort of fluffier brush for contouring than you may see otherwise. I just press the brush together to kind of flatten it out, but I'm not going for Kim Kardashian here. We're going for a soft, natural looking contour, but I still like to kind of control where I put it. So by pressing the brush like that, you can see I'm getting a pretty good line. And then I'll stop pressing the brush and blend it a little bit so it's not too strong of a line. always do under my cheekbones there and then the outer part of my forehead doing much blending and then right under my chin I'm also not one for nose contouring I think I'm a little bit nervous to do it wrong because I've seen it done very wrong but if you're into nose contouring, now would be the time to do that. So contour is finished, we're moving on to blush. Tarte's Exposed is probably the prettiest, easiest to wear blush I've ever used. It looks natural, it's not too pinky, you can wear whatever lipstick you want with it. It's wonderful. If you like a lot of color with your blush, I don't think you would like this because you can see it's really natural looking, but I love that it adds some warmth to my cheek without being Super colorful because I like lipstick. For my lower lash line, I'm gonna pick up the same smudge brush I used for that upper eyeliner and not even add more product to it. I'm just gonna smudge my lower lash line. So any eyeliner that's left over just goes down there. I don't like heavy liner on my lower lash line, so this does the trick for me. If I needed more, I would just press the brush into the eyeliner. I wouldn't put the eyeliner on my skin. Pixi's Lower Lash Mascara is a front runner for me these days. It has a nice, tiny, skinny wand so I can get all of those lower lashes. My go-to lip color for most of the summer and now most of the fall is Urban Decay's Morning After. It is a sheer color, but you can layer it to get really good pigment. It's like the most easy to wear, cool toned, soft pink. So whenever I'm thinking of doing my makeup for photos or a video or anything, I just try and think of looking like myself, but just with a little extra impact. So a little mascara on the lashes, a little contour so I don't look like I'm just flat one pane. Um, a little blush, warms everybody up. So if you're not into doing this much makeup for family photos or on a daily basis, just a little blush, a little lipstick, eyeliner and mascara can go a long way. So stick with the brown family, I would say. That tends to be the most flattering because it's the closest to your natural skin color. Um, and avoid like too strong of black eyeliner. I always see that. And I always see too heavy of liner under your eyes. That can drag your face down. Well, it gives you a lot of definition. S instead of doing a strong lower liner, do an extra coat of mascara on the lower lashes. And that'll keep your eyes looking open and it won't look too heavy underneath. 